this is Ravi Rose, founder of IRU. Super pleased to be here with Bob, who is the founder of Credit Repair Resources. Um, and uh, he helps individuals across the U.S. Um, to, uh, to help you to check your credit, fix your credit, and be able to move on so that you can go and accomplish those goals and dreams that you have right now. And what we're going to be talking about is when do you want to check um, and, and repair your credit? A lot of people like to procrastinate this and they like to wait, 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 wait until everything is done, 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 thinking, well, the most important thing is I need to first get my divorce degree and we need to argue back and forth and we need to get everything done. And once that's done, then I can go think about my credit. Um, we, Rob and I have seen all too many times people who have actually done it wrong. And we're teaching you now how to do it the right way, which is actually the reverse of what you know. So what you're going to do now is you're going to figure out your credit. You're going to start to repair it in order to meet the timeline of your end goals. So the most important thing is that you speak to the right professionals when you start off, whether it's a financial advisor, whether it's, a, you know, Bob at Credit Repair Resources, whether it's a realtor or a mortgage loan officer, people who are trained in divorce and understand the divorce process. Once you craft this strategy, once you have all your information, once you have all the knowledge, then you're going to go to your attorney and you're going to start detailing exactly what you want in your divorce degree. So, Bob, please do share with us, <laughs> when do we want to start repairing credit issues? Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk about that. And, and you know, you mentioned uh, the procrastination. And as a, uh, a semi-professional procrastinator myself, I think it's important to examine why are you procrastinating on on checking it? Because, um, you know, it, it it's not going to get better if you don't look at it. And, and I think there's a couple of reasons people don't look at their credit. It's the fear of the unknown, right? Nobody likes bad news. And so uh, there's sometimes when I get an email and I know it's going to be a challenge to deal with whatever's in that email. So maybe I save that email for later in the day or what have you. We, we all do that. So um, it, it's that fear of the unknown. Um, you know, or, or maybe it's the fear of, you know, you know, it's going to be bad and you just can't deal with it. But I'll, I'll tell you that pressure of, of waiting and waiting and just having that hanging over your head instead of just ripping off the Band-Aid and doing it. Um, just think how good you'll feel when you actually start working on the process and when you have better credit. Uh, so, so, you know, just it, do whatever you can to steal yourself and, and, and tackle that, that fear of the unknown. If you're so afraid of it, um, maybe you can have someone else look at your credit for you and gently break it to you, whether that's a, a family member, whether it's your financial advisor, whether it's us here at Credit Repair Resources, maybe somebody can can look at it and go, oh, you're, you're not as bad uh, as you thought. I, I have clients all the time go, you know, it's it's a mess, isn't it, Bob? And I'm like, I, I'm going to be honest with you. You're not the worst credit report I've seen this month. Heck, I don't even think you're the worst one, uh, you know, I've seen in, in, in a long time. So um, it, it's probably not as bad as you might think it is. Uh, our fears usually uh, exceed reality. So so take a look or, or have someone help you. I think the other reason people procrastinate is they're not sure where to look at their credit report. There are so many websites out there to look and you know some charge, some are free. Um, you know, some of them are, are very confusing. In the US, we have um, uh, uh, free annual credit report.com or annual credit report.com where you can get your, your credit report for free. That's a gover government mandated site. Uh, and, and you can look at it for free, but then you get three different credit reports and that gets very confusing. So if you're not sure where to look, um, uh, you know, I, I have a document I'd be happy to share with you. Uh, and, and it might even actually be in my, in my profile here where you can just look and see some sites that I would suggest to you. So once you finally steal up the nerve to look, what might you find? Well, hopefully you'll find a, a great score. The score range goes in, in most, there's a number of different score ranges, a number of different score models, but typically it goes from 350 to 850. So um, our, our website is crr760.com because we feel at a score of 760 and above, you can pretty much write your own ticket. So um, anywhere in that range is, is great. If you're a 650 or above, you're, you're still doing well. If you're not, that's great. That means you have an opportunity to improve. And there are things that you can do to improve it. I've never met somebody who is, is just hopeless. Now, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, the, the, the correct solution is, is a bankruptcy or something else, but most of the time, you know, they can do something, but it does take time. 
right? It, you know, like I say, Rome wasn't built in a day. Good credit wasn't built in a day. Good credit does take time because part of the scoring model involves how long have you had good, open, positive trade lines. So you, you might find some late payments. Uh, the most devastating thing on a credit report is recent late payments. I was looking at a credit report this morning uh, that we were working on and, and we got a collection uh, taken off the credit report. So yay, but the scores hadn't improved and that confused me. And then I discovered, oh, uh, another new collection just popped up. So uh, and so we're gonna work on, on, on tackling that one and get that one removed as well. So um, you might find some collections on there. You might find some lay payments. Um, you might know, find some things that are aged out that shouldn't be there anymore. Stuff stays on the credit report for uh for seven years so uh if it's older than that and unfortunately i i see that all the time where things are still on the credit report that are over seven years old those should be removed even if they're not negative items i like to get those removed uh just because um it it, it just clouds and, and muddies the report uh, you also want to look at the inquiries on your credit report, especially in a divorce situation. You want to make sure that all the inquiries are inquiries that you made. Uh, a lot of times when we have clients contact us about identity theft or identity fraud, um, one of the areas I have them check is the inquiries. And if they don't recognize some, you know, gee, I never applied for a Home Depot card. I'm a, I'm a Lowe's person. Okay, that's great. Uh, somebody applied for a Home Depot card in your name, and it could have been your soon-to-be ex-spouse. It could have been a complete and total stranger that got access to your information. So you want to make sure and check that to make sure that's accurate as well. Those are some important uh, indicators. Uh, as, I, as I kind of wrap up, I want to tell a quick story. I was on the phone with a a, a potential client recently, a uh, real good guy. And, and he says, hey, you know, Bob, financially, I'm, I'm, I've been very blessed and I'm good. And you know, I've got this debt out there, but I don't care about my credit. Uh, I pay cash for everything. I don't, I don't worry about my credit. And I said, his, his name was, let's, let's say his name is Tom, just to protect the guilty. I said, Tom, that, that, that's great. I'm glad you have great, you know, finances and resources and you don't care about your credit. But did you realize that your credit does, doesn't go for you getting a car loan or a mortgage or whatever? It affects your auto insurance. It affects your home insurance. It affects your ability to get a job. It affects interest rates you're charged on things like credit cards uh, and, and all kinds of things. So it doesn't just affect your ability to get loans. It affects, it, it's your financial resume to the credit world. So I, I, I said to Tom, that, that's great, but you know, you'll be paying higher insurance rates and, and things like that and higher interest rates on whatever loans you do have if you don't worry a little bit, just a little bit about your credit. So that's why you should check it, check it early, check it every six months to make sure you are on top of it. Uh, anything you think I should add to that? So when should they start their, their process? Should it be when they're still in the beginning process of their divorce? Should it be after they sign their divorce degree? It, it, definitely check it before you sit down and, and, and consult anyone as you're starting to think about the divorce process and trying to lay out your financial future, especially if you're talking to a financial professional, you, you should pull it early on in the process because there might be some things in there, you, you know, that mortgage, you might not know that a, um, a, a home equity line of credit was added or a second mortgage was added to your house. And you absolutely want to include that in your negotiations as you're going through the divorce process. So I, I I don't think you can look at it too early. I think you should check it every six months because it does change. Don't be one of those. I have clients that check it like every day and I'm like, yeah, credit just doesn't change that quickly. So um, every six months should be fine. If you're actively in the process, every 45 days, uh, it should update. So the most important thing to remember is that sometimes it takes time to repair your credit. And it's not like just bam, oh, I'm going to call Bob and from today to tomorrow, he's going to suddenly have it reversed or, or removed. Um, sometimes things take time. So if you're relying on your credit in order to uh, remortgage, to refinance, to get a new loan, to, you know, uh, to get insurance, you know, as a solo person, as a solo household income earner, you know, it's very important that you check your credit in advance, take all the precautions, do all the work that needs to be done, and then sort of time it so that at the same time as like you're signing your divorce degree and you're ready to start taking action, all the credit stuff has been cleared or worked on and the process has started so that you don't have to wait until everything is done and then wait even longer to, to then be able to accomplish your goals. 
So if this resonates with you, if this is information that you'd like to know more about, if this is something that has piqued your interest and your curiosity, please do feel free to reach out to Credit Repair Resources. Uh, they'd be delighted to have a consultation with you to provide you with more guidance, information, um, and to, to let you know what are your options. It's important to at least know what your options are. Think bigger, think larger, um, and then you know take, uh, take proper uh, decisions from that point on. So thank you, Bob, for being here with us and sharing this great uh, educational information with us. And thank you all for being and watching for the next time. Uh, next time we speak, I'll, I wish you a day that matters. Take care, everyone.